Hello, I am Ryan, and these are my favorite cruiser tires. There's only one place to start a list like this, the Michelin Commander 2. Everything that a cruiser tire should be, this is. And they're smooth, they're comfortable, and they run for ridiculously long mileage. The quality of the Commander is in its bones. Michelin uses air mid plies in this tire, which are stronger and lighter than steel. For one, that makes the tire very stable. Even at high speeds when the centrifugal force wants to deform the tread pattern, this guy is going to hold its shape and roll true. The other thing I like about a solid core is that it diminishes rolling resistance, meaning that this tire is going to go a really long way before you need to replace it. I hear reports of 20,000 kilometers on a daily basis, and a few times a year I'll come across somebody who runs a Commander 2 up to 40,000 clicks. Now, performance. Because the carcass is rock solid, the rubber doesn't have to be. Michelin can afford to use a softer rubber compound without sacrificing too much mileage. Burn it in a straight line, burn it into a corner, whatever floats your boat. While I love the grip, I have a few gripes. For one, it's not a cool looking tire. And these grooves channel water fine, but they look like they were designed by a computer. It's the definition of ordinary. My other complaint is the profile. Brand spanking new and it already looks flat on top. I know cruises are about straight line cruising but a little bit more of an aggressive profile would do wonders for turnability. Anyway, I would still buy this tire. For my big Harley, lightweight metric, whatever. The Commander 2 is my first choice on pretty much anything. There's a reason why it has over 135 out of 5 reviews on Fortnite.ca. So what could possibly compete with the Commander 2? Well, Metzler tried for a long time with the ME880 Marathon, but the problem was, even though they called it the Marathon, it just wasn't getting the mileage that the Commander was. Fast forward a few years, and Metzler takes another stab at dethroning the King with the ME888 Marathon Ultra. This thing is a sniper rifle straight at the Commander 2. It handles Harleys and metrics, just like the Michelin. It uses air mid belts, just like the Michelin. And in this size bracket, it comes in around the same price point. 189 for this guy, 174 for the Commander. But standing here with both tires, I think Metzler has failed again. The Germans must have been really embarrassed when the 880 failed to run its marathon, because they basically sacrificed everything for mileage with the 888. The sidewall is incredibly stiff, and the rubber up top is overly dense and not very grippy. I don't know what they put in this thing, but it weighs a lot more than the Commander. Another problem is that Metzler made the contact patch 15% wider in this tire, hoping that spreading the weight around might decrease tire wear. It did work, but... That's a big sacrifice to make in the name of longevity. With such a wide contact patch, this tire is honestly a bit of a nightmare to turn in. So obviously, I think the ME888 missed its mark, but it still hits something, and that's why it made my list. You see, for really heavy bikes, cruiser tourers like the Road King or Electric Glide, the ME888 is actually a great choice. The beefy rubber and carcass will actually be malleable under a large bike, and the wide contact patch will help big machines to feel planted as well. So long as you ride a big bike and you're really more into touring than handling, the Metzler's ME888 can hold its own. Now, what if I ride a chunky motorcycle, but I still want to throw it into a corner now and then? Well, Pirelli thinks they have a solution, and they call it the Night Dragon. Every other tire manufacturer needs to listen up, because Pirelli has the coolest names. Oddly enough though, the Night Dragon's style is nothing to write home about. Anyway, the Night Dragon is similar to the ME888 in a lot of ways. One of them being that Pirelli owns Metzler, and manufactures both tires in the same German factory. Nudge nudge hint hint, these tires are more similar than either company lets on. So, just like the ME888, the Night Dragon has a really heavy duty carcass for big, heavy bikes. But unlike the Metzler, Pirelli uses a softer rubber compound on top. And you can actually feel the difference, it's really malleable and almost sticky. And that means better grip, coming off the line, going into a corner, wherever. I hate oxymorons, so I'm not going to call this thing a sport cruiser. But I'm tempted. In Pirelli's own words, the Night Dragon is designed for performance and styled for stance. Which basically means that it's very stable. It doesn't have that aggressive profile and it's not going to lay itself down at the first sight of a corner. But if you do manage to lean this thing over, it has the grip to keep you there. If you have a big bike and you ride it like a big boss, this is the tire I would choose. Just don't expect it to last as long as the ME888. Now, if you're anything like me, you don't have a big bike. I'm more into small and vintage cruisers, and there's an obvious favorite for that kind of machine. It's the Dunlop D404. One of the things I like is that it costs 150 bucks, because I'm a cheap bastard. 
The D404 comes stock on a lot of Japanese cruisers, and Dunlop makes loads of sizes to fit historical models as well. So it's a great go-to tire in that sense. They also make a white wall version, and on that note, even with this black wall one, I just love how classic the sidewall looks. I mean, there's a few numbers and letters, but it's nothing too much. Compared to the more heavily designed modern tires, this is refreshingly vintage. The tread pattern as well is legitimately cool. It's almost retro looking, but it's clever at the same time. See, we have this offset center channel here, which is gonna trap a lot of water and then channel it to the outside. And because the groove never really follows the exact middle of the tire, that prevents this wheel from wanting to chase and follow cracks in the road. I also noticed the teeny tiny siping channels in this tire, which are great at moving water around without decreasing the contact area. I just wish Dunlop provided larger reservoirs for the water to channel into, because these sipes are gonna fill up super fast. Of all the tires on my list, this one has the most rounded profile, so it takes the top prize for flickability. It's grippy as well, and contrary to popular belief, I find that the D404 has a decent wear life. A lot of people give it a bad reputation because they go and install it on their super fat bagger and just tear it to shreds in a few thousand clicks. But if you put this tire where it's meant to go, on a lighter weight cruising bike, I think you'll find that it lasts a fairly long time. If you do love the D404 and absolutely need it on your heavier bike, then Dunlop does make the D401 and D402 for Harley Davidson's. It's the exact same tread pattern, but with a stiffer sidewall. To be honest though, those tires jump up a bracket into the $200 range. And for that money, you'd better have a damn good reason for not choosing a Michelin Commander 2. Now, to close us off, I've got something special. This is the Avon AV72 Cobra. And finally, we have a tire that takes style seriously. I love the gorgeous snakeskin design around the sidewall here with the matching snake head on top as well. And the tread pattern, I mean, it just looks like someone carved it with this flaming samurai sword or something. Avon says that uh, these are supposed to be water siping grooves and they channel water outside and yeah, kinda. I mean, you could see how it would work, but that's obviously not the main priority here. Avon also claims that they use their super sport heritage in designing this tire. And again, yeah, Kinda. We do have varying tension belts for really rigid, high mileage center, and then softer, grippier sides. But honestly, this is a single rubber compound. So varying the belt tension is a bit of a band-aid fix. Anyway, this is a great wheel, particularly for anyone with a really powerful cruiser. Triumph Rocket 3, V-Rod, Goldwing. This tire is designed to handle a lot of torque. The AV72 is also great for custom bikes because it comes in a million obscure sizes, white wall and black wall, all the way up to fatties like this. In the end, the AV72 Cobra doesn't do anything better than the other tires on my list, but it doesn't do much worse either. It just looks a million times cooler doing it. So that's it for my favorite cruiser tires. As always, the product links are right below this video, and thank you very much for watching.